Hey there, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a login form using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with show hide password feature. So, let me show you what exactly we are going to build. As you can see, I have already created a project folder that contains the index.html file and a folder named Assets. Inside the Assets folder, we have a CSS folder with the style.css file. An IMG folder containing the image we will use in this project. And a JS folder that holds the main.js file. Now, open index.html file. Here, first we will link our CSS file. Then icons library, for that open a browser. And search for remix icon. Now, click on the GitHub icon. Copy this link. And paste it here. Next we will link our JavaScript file. Now inside the body tag let's create a div tag with a class of login. We will use this login class to add this background image and center the login form. After that, add a form tag with a class of login underscore form. Now, inside the form, first, add h1 tag with a class of login underscore title. Then, create a div tag with a class of login underscore content. which will contain these input fields. Now, let's create a div tag with a class of login underscore box for the first input. Which will be used to align the icon and input in a row. And add this below line. So here, first we will add an icon. For icon go back to remix icon and search for mail. Now click on the icon, copy. And paste it here. We will also give it a class of login underscore icon. Then, add an input tag with a class of login underscore input.
and set its type to email. The floating text here is a label, not a placeholder. Now, let's go back to the HTML file. And create a label tag with a class of login underscore label. Now, create a div tag with a class of login underscore box underscore input. And move the input and label tags into this div so, we can position the label relative to the input more easily. Now, copy the login underscore box class div and paste it one time for password input. So here, first we will change an icon and icon lore i dash lock dash two dash line. Its input type will be password. And label text will be also password. Here you can see we also have an eye icon. Now move back to Remix icon and search for eye. Now click on the icon, copy. And paste it here after label. Also give it a class of login underscore i. Now, create a div tag with a class of login underscore check. Inside that, we will have two children, the first will contain this checkbox and remember me text. And the second will be a forgot password link. So here, first create a div tag with a class of login underscore check underscore group. Which will contain checkbox input and remember me text. For input, create an input tag with a class of login underscore check underscore input. And its type will be checkbox. After input, add a label tag with a class of login underscore check underscore label. Now, add an anchor tag with a class of login underscore forgot.
After that, we will have this login button. So, for that, let's create a button tag with a class of login underscore button. And its type will be submit. And at the end, we are going to create a paragraph tag with a class of login underscore register. As the register text will be link, so we will wrap it inside the anchor tag. Now, let's move to the CSS file. First, I have imported Google Fonts here, and the font we are going to use is Poppins. Let me show you how to get this link. Open a browser, and search for Google Fonts. Then look for Poppins. Click on Get Font. Then get Embed Code. And select the sizes you want to use. Now, copy this line of code and paste it into your CSS file. Next, I have created CSS variables for colors. The benefit of using these variables is that if you want to change a color later, you won't need to go through the entire CSS file to update it in every place it's used. Instead, you can change it here, and it will automatically update everywhere on the website. After that, we have a variable for the font family. You will find this value here. I have also created variables for font sizes. The benefit of storing font sizes in variables is that when we make the website responsive, we won't need to search for selectors to change their values. Instead, we can simply change the values of these variables. Similarly, we have a variable for font weight. Then, we have some base styling. There is a universal selector, and inside it, we have set margin to zero and padding to zero because most elements have some default margin and padding. To remove that, we use these two properties. Then, we have set box sizing to border box. Next, we have defined some styling in the body selector that will be applied to every element. Here, you can see that we have also selected the button and input elements because this styling will not be applied to them. After that, we have given color to the body selector that will be applied to all elements except for input and button elements. Then, we have set outline to none and border to none for buttons and input elements because, by default, these elements have outline and border that we don't want. 
Next, we have set color and font weight for the H1 element. Here, we only have one heading, but on websites, there are often multiple headings that share the same styling, such as font weight and color. That's why I set common styles here, this way, we don't need to repeat the same properties again and again. At the end, we have set text decoration to none for all anchor tag. Now, select login class. First, we will ensure it takes 100% of the viewport height. After that, add background image. Also set background size to cover. and background position to center. To center our phone, we will set display to grid. And use place items to center it. Next, we will style form. For that, select login underscore form class. First, we will give form a background color. Then border. Just below that, set backdrop filter to blur 8 pixels. After that, Set width to 432 pixels. We will also add padding of 4 rem to the top, 3 rem to the left and right, and 3.5 rem to the bottom. And finally, set border radius to 1.5 rem. Now, select login underscore title class. First, we will set text align to center. Then, set font size to H1 font size. And margin bottom to 2 rem. Now, I want to add some space between these inputs and some space at the bottom. To achieve this, select login underscore content class. And set display to grid. Then add a row gap of 1.75 rem. After that, set margin bottom to 1.5 rem. Now, we'll align icon and input in one line. To do this, select the login underscore box class.
and set display to flex. Then, align items to center. Also give column gap of 0.75 rem. And finally, add a bottom border. Next, let's increase the size of these icons slightly. Here, select login underscore icon class, and also select login underscore i class, as both will have the same font size. Now, select login underscore box underscore input class. And set background color to red. Now, we want this child of the flex container to occupy the remaining space. For that, set flex grow to 1. Now, remove this background property. Next, select login underscore input class. And set its width to 100%. Then, add padding of 0.75 rem to the top and bottom. After that, change background to none. And finally, set color to white color. Now, select login underscore box underscore input class. And set position to relative. After that, select login underscore label class. First, we will set position to absolute. Then, left to zero. And top to 13 pixels. After that, we will give it font weight. Now, select login underscore i class. Set its position to absolute. Right to zero. And top to 18 pixels. Finally, set cursor to pointer. Next, we will align this checkbox and forgot password link. For that, select login underscore check class. And set display to flex. Align items to center. And justify content to space between.
to a line checkbox and remember me text, we'll use same properties. So, also select login underscore check underscore group class here. Now, select login underscore check class again. And set margin bottom to 1.5 rem to add some space below. After that, select login underscore check underscore label class. As well as login underscore forgot and login underscore register classes. Now, set their font size to small font size. Again select login underscore check underscore group class. And set column gap to 0.5 rem. Next, select login underscore check underscore input class. And set width to 16 pixels. And height will be also 16 pixels. Now, select login underscore forgot class. And change its color to white color. Now, we will add hover effect. After that, we will style login button. For that, select login underscore button class. First, we will set its width to 100%. Then, give it padding of 1 rem. After that, set border radius to 0.5 rem. and background color to white color. Next, set font weight. Then, cursor to pointer. And finally, add a margin bottom of 2 rem. Now, we will align this text to center. After that, select anchor tag that is inside login underscore register class. And first change its color to white color. Then, font weight to font medium. Now, let's add hover effect to anchor tag.
Next, we will make this floating text animation. First, select login underscore input class. And when it is focused, we will change position and font size of label that comes immediately after focused input. But there is one problem, the label returns to its original position when the input loses focus. To resolve this, let's go back to the CSS file. This targets label when input has a value, meaning placeholder is not visible. Now, add a placeholder to input fields. And ensure that it includes a space as its value. After that, we will create the show hide password toggle. Now, create a function called show hidden pass. Then, here we will pass two parameter. Login pass, which will be the ID of password input field. Login I, which will be the ID of I icon. Now, we will fetch HTML elements based on the IDs passed as parameters by using document.getElementById. Now, create a variable named input that will store password field.
ben, icon i that will store i icon element. After that, add a click event to the eye icon. Now, we will check if the input.type is password. We will change it to text, so the user can see the password. We will also toggle eye icon. If the password is visible, we will add class or i dash i dash line. And we'll remove our i dash i dash off dash line class. If it's already text, we will switch it back to password to hide password. And when password will be hidden, we will remove class or i dash i dash line. And we'll add our i dash i dash off dash line class. Now, let's invoke the function. After that, let's add these IDs.
Now let's make form responsive.